In this presentation, we'll give an overview of email marketing and how it could fit into a business model. Get ready for business, online business. In prior presentations, we talked about a general business model and you might be thinking, well, I've heard a lot about email marketing. How exactly would that fit in to the general business model? So in essence, the business model, what we're thinking here is we're gonna have our normal type of business, whether it be on ground employee or a business on ground or whether it be working online, starting off possibly at major uh, platforms such as a tutoring platform like a varsity tutor or something like Upwork for contracting work and then running our own system parallel thinking that we could do similar work in terms of consulting or tutoring or something like that or uh, other types of offers we could have on our website whatever it is we would like to do we would like to get a core client base over here or a core items of what we do and build this up basically naturally one way to do that is to start a youtube channel or something like that so that this can assist us with the normal kind of work like the on ground type of work that we could use by making supporting videos to help us with that and then hopefully drive traffic to the youtube channel we just need to drive enough traffic to be pulling that information up to the website which has our offer our offer being something like this is my consulting this is what we do so that we can get our specific clients up here these are going to be the ones that we're going to be very picky about uh the clients over here so the clients on this side if we pick up things through a bulk website or upwork or something like that we're looking for quantity over quality we're probably not making as much over here however uh hopefully we don't have to do a, a whole lot of work vetting you know the clientele that we're going to be working with whereas over here as we build up people that go into our website here we're going to spend a lot more time you know vetting the people that uh, we're going to be working with working with quality people to clients that we trust and we only need to get you know a good number of these over here in order to make that worthwhile now if you if you spend any time with this you're going to hear well you need to and you need to build up an email marketing type of list now, an email marketing list can be a very great tool. I do recommend putting it in place in most types of uh, structures that you're going to be putting together. However, there's also a time for it as to when you want to put the email marketing list. For a lot of people, it might not be the first thing that they're going to be doing here. You might want to set up basically this system first, worry about the email marketing at some point in time. At some point in time, it can be a useful tool. And if you have the time to start building up an email marketing list, it can be a useful thing to do because that list, your personal list of contacts can be very valuable. It can also be very valuable, especially in the types of things that you are doing. So if you start to sell things like uh, courses and things like that, which is one of the, a, a really good type of thing that, that you can do or an easy thing you can type of do that would branch out naturally from making basically YouTube videos to support your business then it can work really well because then you have a marketing list that you can then say hey you know this is what i'm working on right now and put that out in the email list so whatever you're working out obviously you can tell everyone on your social media and whatnot in your in your core areas and then you can have uh, the email list as well so how would that basically work in this structure it's in essence going to be a connection or a part of the website so as you have this set up here you're going to have this item set up you're going to have your YouTube that will be po pointing to the website and you'll have your offer here basically on the email. The email can be a part of the item on your website. This complicates things because what you're basically building here is more of a funnel, a sales type funnel. And we could talk about more sales types funnels later. That, that's a huge topic in and of itself. But the basic essence of it is, is that you're going to be providing something of value in exchange for the email usually. Then if we have our YouTube videos here, we can start to mention on the YouTube videos that we would like you to join our email list. And typically the item would be the, the pitch would be or the offer would be we will provide you something of value in exchange for the email. Now, you don't have to do that. You could just say, hey, look, you know, we have resources up here. We'd like to have you on the email list. But typically the thing that's going to get people to sign up to an email list is some type of, of offer, some type of exchange for the email so the typical way that would happen is you'd have the youtube video possibly at the end of the youtube video saying hey look uh we have this particular thing we'd like to exchange it for your email so that we can contact you and tell you more about our courses and something like that so again how do you fit how do you then break out this email list we want the email list so that we can give periodic emails about what we're doing 
that can increase engagement because you could be engaging and just give people information. Hopefully they, they like your emails and like to hear what you're doing. That would be good, right? And you can also give them pitches. You don't want to be giving them a pitch all the time in terms of here's my new course, here's my new thing. Uh, because So you have to find some balance between on the emails and what you're doing. But if you're making content like YouTube videos a lot, you can usually break those out and give someone some value and then tell them what you're doing in terms of courses as well. So some balance in that uh, is needed you, and you have to work with it to see what, you know, what works best for you. Now, the major obstacle with email marketing is going to be gathering that list. Once you have the list, then you've got kind of the technical problem of emailing out to a bunch of people to basically the same kind of thing, your newsletter, you know, what you're doing and whatnot. And usually you're going to use a tool. MailChimp's probably the most common tool for people that are starting out because they have a fairly significant portion that is free. You can have a lot of people on the email list and have some free tool for it and it, and it works quite well for it. And so what you want to do when you send out the emails, you're trying to do it in such a way that you're in compliance with the laws for the, basically the can spam app and the laws related to sending out emails. And the MailChimp will, will help you to organize the emails and send them out in the correct number of batches and whatnot so that uh, you're in compliance with that. So we have then MailChimp as, as that component. So then the question is, of course, what, how do we do the difficult thing, which is going to be uh, increase the, the, the mailing list? How do we get people on the mailing list? Well, one way to do that is to actually go to your LinkedIn account, all your connections on your LinkedIn account, you actually have access to their information. You can download their emails. I believe you could still do that. The last time I checked, you could do that. Now you want to get verification with the email. So know that you'd like to ask the people on your LinkedIn, possibly you can ask them, Hey, can I put you on my uh, email list? It's kind of considered rude to put, just put them on the email list and start sending them emails. But just note that the connections in LinkedIn, you typically have their contact information and you can actually download or at least at one time you you could not too long ago. I haven't checked it for a little while, but you can actually go in and download the entire contact list and the entire uh, email list and you can you can, you know, use those. But again, you want to get verification that those are not quality emails. You don't have the verification for them. And also, if you just collect a bunch of emails like that, that that weren't people that actually engaged then you're going to upset people one and two you're also going to end up with a large list that isn't really driving traffic for you and if you go over a certain capacity such as 2000 on mailchimp then you have to pay for the service anyways it will also lead to at some point in time you needing to uh, filter out and uh, adjust your email list right so if you email your if you create your email list by just bulk emailing uh, in, in a way where people haven't verified, people don't really want to be on it or haven't suggested that they want to be there, and then you're going to have to trim back the email list. Now, typically that could happen by sending out the emails and people will decline them, which is fine. But if you have a whole lot of people that are declining the emails, that could cause you problems with it, with the Can Spam Act and, and whatnot. And also, uh, and so that could cause you problems with MailChimp possibly. And so you want to be, so you don't want to have problems with, with that type of thing. And, and also it's just, if they don't do that, you could have a lot of people on LinkedIn that are just, uh, you know, they're not even real accounts. So you're sending the stuff out to an, to an empty email and you might say, well, who cares? It's a span, you know, it's just, we're just sending out a bunch of emails, but again, you're going to have to pay for that at some point. So at some point you're going to want to trim down the list on on the mail chip and so you're going to have to do admin where it's going to be a little bit difficult you have to think about how you're going to trim it down it's possible because you can just look at the the emails on the list that aren't going to anyone or who hasn't opened your emails and you could just go in there and delete them so just be aware that you have you basically have the email contacts on linkedin uh you could download the entire thing but it's not really advisable and it's not something that you know is is uh, really good in some ways but just note you have that information and you could ask of course on linkedin if people could be on your mailing list okay and then the second way the more kind of traditional way is you is you have uh, your website here and on the website you're going to have a free offer typically so typically if you get people to drive to your website then you then the question is well can i get this you know i'd like to get this person to uh to ask him if they if they want to be on my email list now you could just say, you know, please join our email list and that could work. But uh, typically if you give them something, they're more likely to reciprocate, right? Just like any, any kind of charity, 
when they ask for something, they give you something, right? Here's a, here's a book or something like, here's a flower, you know, would you give us money? <laughs> and you're more likely to give them the money because they gave you a flower. So that's, so that's what you want. You want your free thing. It's a token thing. Doesn't need to be worth a lot of stuff. You know, it could be just like a worksheet when you're making your Excel or your YouTube videos, you might have some worksheets that might be useful to people depending on whatever you do. Just say, hey, here's my free worksheet. It's been helpful to some people. Might be helpful to you. I'll give it to you in exchange for the email list so, and uh, then we can contact you on what we're doing. So if you're involved in what we're doing here, we'll, we'll do that for you. So that means we give the free thing, right? In exchange for the email. To do that then, you have to have people go into your, your page basically they're going to click on the item that's going to have the free thing. It's going to download and that transaction is going to then collect the email, which means you're going to have to integrate MailChimp, uh, the list. So that email, you don't want to have to collect it physically and then go to MailChimp and put it on your list. You should be able to set that up with MailChimp so that when that transaction happens, it automatically will be added to your list. That's going to be one of the, the key components uh, for MailChimp. So there's a lot of information on how to set that up. If you want to, if you want to research that, this is a typical kind of kind of uh, thing that basically every you know a lot of people do is basically you go you know how do you build your email list? You're gonna you're gonna set up the Mailchimp, have something that they're gonna have in there, and you want to integrate the Mailchimp uh, for for the item that will be set up. So we might go into that later, but again, that this is how it basically works. You can look at and find a lot of resources on how to technically uh, set it up. Now then, how does the YouTube video fit in there? Just note that you could on your YouTube videos, when you give your instructional videos, you could have an end screen on your YouTube videos that says, hey, if you'd like to join our, our mailing list, that would be great. Uh, we also offer this free thing on our website that you can then, uh, you can then use to go to, our, to go to our mailing list. So then you'll have the free thing offer on the YouTube channel. Then you'll have the link at the bottom or actually within the video on the YouTube channel and then the rest of the process is the same. They go to your website and free thing for email. And the email then goes directly into MailChimp and then your list is just building automatically. MailChimp will actually send you um, email saying, hey, someone has, has had, or you could set up contacts to say, this is what's happening with, uh, with your mailing list. So here's basically a WordPress site. And again, this is another reason why a WordPress site is really good because then you can set up basically the landing page. So basically you want to have your, your WordPress site. Now, again, you don't need to have this. You can have your WordPress site and just say, here's, here's what I have. This is what I do. Contact me if you want. You can also have a separate, some people will recommend a separate landing page. So you basically have a different page in and of itself that just provides the offer. So if you have a YouTube video, then it goes to a separate page. It has nothing but that free thing that you said you were going to give in exchange for the email. And then once you get the email, then they can, then they're going to go over to your website. That's going to be a standard sales funnel. Why would you have that? Because then they're not going to be distracted by anything else. If they go to your website and you also have the free thing here, but a bunch of other stuff, then they might get distracted and start clicking on other things and they never actually give you their email. So you kind of got to go back and it's, it's up to you as to what you want to do. I, I kind of like going to the, to, to the webpage because I think it's more straightforward and saying, Hey, here's my webpage. Here's the free offer thing. And, uh, you, you know, you can have that to, it's, if you click on that, then you're going to give me your email for the offer, but you could also have a separate landing page, have everybody go to the separate landing page and go into it. But in any case, somewhere here on your actual page, you're going to have simple page. Still your, what you do, what you do, this is what I do. Here's this major, here's, I'd like you to join my email list. Here's the major thing. Like for, I got a book here. You could give them, if you have a book, you can give them, you know, your book or your major worksheet. It doesn't have to be an entire book. It could be just, here's a, here's a tool that I put together. That's useful to a lot of people. Click on that. I'll give you the tool, join my email list. And, um, and that's going to be the, the standard kind of setup. So you still want your landing page to be very simple. You still want to say, Hey, this is what I do consulting or offer this or that. I sell courses or whatnot. And then. Uh, you can also add a, a free item and then work in your mailing list and add increase your mailing list. The mailing list is most effective usually when you act, when you do something more than just service items. Like if you're selling something like courses or something like that, or if you have engagements that you're going to, you're presenting in certain places, 
and that's useful for you to get the word out on that. Th those types of things are good for an email list. If you're just trying to build up a clientele of so many people, then maybe the email list is not all that important because once you have your clientele, you're not further selling items. But there's always stuff, once you start building this up, that you could probably build up such as courses and, and an email list will work for that. So you might as well build one even if you're not, even if you're not using it. It doesn't cost too much. So MailChimp is usually the one that uh, most people start off with. So here's the website. You can go to MailChimp.com. You can find endless amount of tutorials on how to set up MailChimp and what to do with it. The pricing options are here. So if you go into the pricing options, then uh, you can see the plan. So the standard plan here. Now you have the free plan. All the, ba all the basics for business that are just getting started. And this is why people start off with MailChimp. Once you, once you basically have your, your mailing list, if you want to switch, you can download your entire mailing list and just switch to another one without too much hassle. So it's not so so it's not like they completely lock you in like some things because they have your entire mailing list, right? You can download the mailing list and then upload it somewhere else. So so we have seven marketing channels, one click automation, basic templates. All right. And the main thing here is this one, contacts. How many contacts can I have on my list before I have to start paying people? 2000 so that's going to be one of the big factors here and that's usually higher than most other most other email list building sites and that's why a lot of people tend to start off with the mailchimp so you can do some comparisons though with other with other types of um, of setups but it's worth you know opening this up starting a list you know get used to mailchimp you know even if you only have five people on it it's free and then and then see if it, if there's a point where it can integrate into your business. Now, again, I'm not, I don't think it's the core thing that the, the mailing list for most people, especially if you're not selling actual things at first, if you're trying to do consulting. So I would always go back to, this is the core, you know, your core, think about your core and all these other things. Like we talked about all the other social media platforms, talking to people, trying to build the network with everybody in the world and whatnot. If you start, you know, don't let that drive you away from the core or else you're going to go insane, right? And then I would think of, of the mailing list, at least when you start out in the same way, you know, it's not really part of the core, but you know, it's another thing that you can kind of uh, tack on and start working into as you get better on your, on your core.